and you hear me well. Okay, okay so yeah, thanks for being here, for listening to me. I'm going to present our work on a fair allocation algorithm for predictive policing patrolling. This is a joint work with Isabella Rodas and Álvaro Riascos, and I'm Mateo Dulce uh, from Quantil. This is a Colombian company used to, to do some research on artificial intelligence, mainly for public policy issues. And this is uh, in, in a, during a project and inside a big project with the security office of Bogota, the capital city of Colombia, to investigate and develop and test some predictive police algorithms to help uh, the, the police in, in our city. Um, so that's the motivation. I have to say that this is something standard now, the use of predictive policing models using data mining techniques, artificial intelligence to predict where and when a crime will occur is now widely used around the world. It's quite ubiquitous, it's got a standard in police agencies in major cities. And it's used to predict crime and then to use this as an input to allocate scarce scarce resources from police. However, these models have raised a lot of criticism. I know you may not may be aware of them uh, because they have shown to generate bias. They have been shown to perpetrate some biases in the data sets that are, that are in the data sets due to how historically cities have been patrolled by police uh, that haven't been like randomly. Police don't patrol a city randomly, so the data they gather by observing crimes is not a representative sample of the actual crimes that occur in a city. Um, and they respond actually to some complex interaction between the communities, criminals, police, politics, uh, corruption, resources, criminality, and a lot of other things. So when you train a model using this data that is not representative of the crime distribution, then what you have, what you are able to estimate what you recover using a neural network, a deep model, or um, these algorithms of, of artificial intelligence is not the actual distribution of crime. Yeah, it's not this data generating process, but something that involves a lot, a lot of other things. And due to this, when you train the models using this data and then use the models to deploy police, gather new data and retrain the models using this same data, then this tend to produce uh, something called a feedback loop that perpetuate and actually creates even, even bigger biases in the data and generates, well, disparate impacts on disadvantaged population, right? Um, so the question has been uh, in the literature for several years on how to balance accuracy, a good model at predicting when and where crime will occur such that we can send police there uh, the terror criminals or, or capture them, but also fairness in the sense that we can allocate security that is at the end a public service from the state uh, in the most fair way. Fairness being something still not like widely accepted as a, a standard definition, but how can we assure that this public services is provided to the citizenship in a fair, equit way? Um, some previous efforts along these lines. I will just mention three of them, but you have to know that there's a lot of literature around this topic. Um, the first work on Sagnik et al. It's, it's one of the, yeah, one, one that is really important in this literature. And it shows that filtering the absurd crimes. So again, we are in the, the problem where we are using predictive models to deploy police and then using the data, the police observe the crimes they're discovered in their patrolling, in their routines, to retrain the models. So NSEC et al. in 2017 proposed that if you filter these observed crimes that, it, that are used to retrain the models, then you can avoid feedback loop. And the key here is that you, can, you should filter the crimes with probability inverts to the probability of going to a place. If you go to a place with 80% of probability, as your model, as your predictive model is telling you, like a probability of occurring a crime here is 80% and you assign a, a patrol to that place, then you should wait 
uh, this prime or filter that prime with probability one minus b with 10%, okay? This is something in the lines of exploring or exploiting, you know, where you are exploring all the city randomly and you're only adding a crime into the data set they use to retrain the models when um, after traversing all the city, you only observe a crime at that exact place. Then you can figure this as a exploit um, your known data set, your known predictive model to go to patrol the city or you can explore the city in order to observe new crimes and learn better the actual crime distribution over the city. Okay, other traditional approaches as we cook it all in 2020, they modified, modified a GANS model, a generative adversarial networks model of crime prediction, and they include in the loss function, learning function, this term, an additional term that penalizes for model miscalibration. So they're saying, if you, your model is miscalibrated in the sense that the predictive probability at some region of the city is not equal to the empirical probability of serving that city, the empirical frequency of crimes of serve in that region, then if you're miscalibrated and these two quantities are not equal, then you're either underestimating the probability of crime occurrence, and then you're not sending enough police to those places such that the communities are, well, they're not receiving the public service of security that you should provide to them, or you're either overestimating the probability of crime occurrence and you're sending more police to that, to that place. So it, that is inefficient. We're, we're allocating these scarce resources to a place that doesn't need it, but also there are some works that show that over patrolling, over policing, over watching a community can actually yeah, harm the community, their social tissue, their interaction between them and their autonomy. Okay. And by the by last, I I'll mention the work by Sign It All in 2019, uh, where they proposed an algorithm for fair allocation of police patrol. And they explicitly tried to balance this at accuracy, fairness, trade off where they maximize the expected number of crimes discovered by the police by ruling out unfair allocation. I'm going to explain uh, better the, this algorithm. And we're actually, we use this algorithm as our base for our work. We extend this algorithm to include a more realistic um, process of crime distribution and to the actual interest of Bogota City. Um, and we show that our algorithm performs better than, than the original algorithm and other standard ways of allocating police to a city. Uh, so, okay, so the problem set up, uh, just to give you an idea of Bogota, this is the, the city of Bogota on your left. And Bogota is di divided into 19 localities, each in, in a color, in a different color. And if you see, each locality is divided into smaller areas that are called, that are called quadrants. There are 1,051 quadrants in the city, and they have been the basic units for police patrolling since... 20 years ago or something. Um, and the idea of the city is that each quadrant is located one police patrol. They always have one police patrol. So we have 1,051 patrols and we allocate them uniformly among the 1,051 quadrants. Is that the best way of allocating the, the, the police in the city? You can see that there are some parts of the city, some quadrants that are smaller than others. Yeah, you can see that they're very by size and they also vary a lot by crime uh, intensity, how often a crime occurs and which type of crime occurs in, in each area of the city. So is this the best way of locating the police? And just to give you an idea, these are the 19 localities in the city. Uh, this is, yeah, you can see that they, first of all, they have different intensity of crime. There are some uh, localities with, on average, 30 crimes per week, as Antonio Nariño, and El Área, Uncolito, and others as Usme, Pantaranda, and Cristobal, uh, that has more than 150 crimes per week um, occurring in the, in the locality. And another thing that I would like you to, to note from this hist for these histograms is that the distribution of weekly robberies per locality is not like a, that is standard distribution. We can see that they have, uh, some of them have like a by model or uh, strong tails to the right, but not to the left. 
or in this case to the left. So it's hard to understand like which is the exact distribution for it at this data generating process. I have to say here that this is also like official records by the police. So we're still in some troubles of under reporting or biases due to police patrolling. Okay, so our the actual problem actually is the, the, the following. A year ago during COVID, the mayor of the city announced that she is going to reduce the number of quadrants in order to allocate more patrols in some places in a dynamic way uh, to address, to tackle the insecurity of the city. Uh, due to COVID, there was a lot of poverty, there were a lot of poverty crimes, so she's trying to improve the security of the city and she's saying, I'm going to reorganize, recreate these quadrants, I'm going to reallocate the place. So our question is, okay, how should we allocate these uh, 1,051 patrols in Bogota among the 19 localities, okay? So among these 19 big areas of the city and then inside each locality, they're going to, to split them into these smaller quadrants uh, they're going to patrol, okay? So this is our big question. And I'm going now to the tour to the original algorithm by El Saint et al. I'm going then to explain our extension to this algorithm. So first, I'm going to define what a fair allocation in this case is. Um, I, I need to, to say that there's an algorithm to find this allocation. So you can take an allocation as a vector of 19 entries, right? one for each locality such that the sum of these entries is less or equal than 1,051. That is our budget of police, and such that each entry is non-negative, bigger or equal than zero, and with um, integer entries too. Okay, you can, you can think of police. I cannot allocate 1.3 uh, patrols to, to us, to a region, and it has to either one or two. So again, I'm looking for a vector in R19, um, such that the sum is less or equal than 1051, they're not negative, each entry, and they're integer, right? Um, so, okay, so I'm going to define what's fair. What does it mean for an allocation for one of these vectors to be fair? And for this, I'm going to introduce uh, this concept of probability of discovering a crime, okay? So if I assign VI police units to this region I, then the probability of observing a crime is just this. I have to say here <coughs> the following. Uh, so the numerator inside this expected value is just the minimum between the number of police located to that area and the number of crimes occurring in that area. Okay, and this is some assumption of how police work um, in the sense that I'm saying here that if I'm, if there are three crimes and two police, then each police is observing one crime, one and only one crime. If there are 10 police and two crimes, they're observing them completely, okay? So here is some hidden assumption that police can actually observe, each police can observe a crime until there are no, no more police, police officers. And as such, then the probability of discovering a crime in the region I, given a number of police, is the expected value of the distribution of crimes of the portion of crimes actually observed in that region. Okay? I'm, there are 10 crimes occurring in the city, and I'm observing just the minimum between 10 and the number of police officers. So the probability of observing a crime, the proportion of observing a crime is just this this ratio uh, in expected value. And here again, um, I, I, may, I have to mention here that the authors originally assumed that CI for each region is a Poisson distribution. Okay, it's a Poisson distribution over the integers that just says uh, how, what's the probability of 10 crimes in region I, in region uh, one, two, three, or 10, 11, 12, okay? Then if I take these probabilities of discovering a crime, I'm going to say that the location V is fair if the probability of discovering a crime between two regions, I take any pair of regions in my city, then the probability of discovering a crime in any two of them does not differ by more than half. Okay? 
uh, need that the difference between observing a crime in i, given its uh, allocation vi, and the probability of discovering a crime in j, given that probability vj is less or equal than alpha. Okay? What's this? What's saying here? Is saying like if police has to be exact, like allocated into a into a place, taking into account two things. One is the actual distribution of crime, right? I, if I allocate a lot of police to a region with a distribution that is not that um, like that frequent, that often, then CI is always small. So this minimum in denominator is going to be small. I'm not going to have a high. Uh, I'm going to have a very high probability of discovering a crime. Okay, so I need to take into account the occurrence of crime and also how this observing crimes in different regions is in different parts of the city. I'm trying here to say that given that a crime occurred, the probability that a police officer is there and observe that crime and do something about it should be the same in every region. If you have some sense. Of the uh, of the fairness literature, this is quite close to the equal odds equalized opportunity um, concepts. That if something is occurring, if you are if you need a police officer, then the probability of the actual officer be there and do something about it should be the same across different regions of the city. Okay, and then the algorithm exploits one one thing, one one good thing, and is that okay? If I assign to the first region some VI units, I just said this region is going to have two police, then uh, this assignment uh, immediately gives me that any other region in the city has to be such that, okay, um, the probability of discovering a crime there lies in this interval, okay, such that the difference between any two regions is less or equal than alpha, then for FJ should be between fi minus alpha half and fi plus alpha two, okay? Um, so I search for this minimum number of police officers for each region fj uh, that lies in this interval, okay? Right. So I'm giving five police to the first region. I need to look how many police officers I need to allocate to the region two, such that the probability of discovering a crime in region two is in the bounds Set defined by region one allocation. Um, I assign that in my in the algorithm. I assign the number of police officers in the region J such that if J is greater or equal than FI minus alpha over two, and then check if the allocation is feasible, meaning that the sum of the of the allocation does not exceed the total numbers of units available. Okay, so I, I assign five police region one, and I say okay, at least I need to assign three to region two, 10 to region three, and 15 to region four. I add them and I see whether that's a feasible allocation if I'm using more than my, my uh, available units or if I still have some remaining uh, police officers. And if so, if I have some remaining units, then I assign them or I'll assign it all, assign them using this uh, greedy rule where they assign the next, the next police unit to the region i such that the probability mass between assigning vi police and vi plus one police is the maximum okay so i want to capture the biggest probability mass between observing between assigning v police and v plus one police okay right um here is like the schema of the original paper um so i'm having at threshold alpha of fairness, uh, my regions in the city, my distribution C, and the number of police officers B. And then what I want to do, so as I was telling you, is that I'm going to assign to region I a number of police between zero and B, compute the probability of observing a crime at region I given that, that allocation, then look for the lower bound for each j such that f i such that um, for region j the probability of observing a crime is between that allowed interval. Uh, check whether the the location is feasible, and just assign the remaining units using these greedy rules 
of the region where the probability of assigning a point is greater, is, is the maximum. Okay, so again, the probability of, this, of discovering a crime is given by the expected value, it's given by the expected value of the minimum between the units assigned and the crimes occurring in that, two, in that region over the actual number of crimes. This T here in the argument is the right tail of the Poisson distribution. So if I'm assigning 10 police to some region, then what's the probability of more than 10 crimes? Okay, what, what's the probability of more than 10 crimes? And I'm actually looking, what's the probability of more than 10 crimes minus the probability of more than 11 crimes? Okay, so I'm looking for this a maximum probability mass between 10 and 11 crimes, given that my, my current allocation is 10 police officers. And finally, uh, we can also use these tails to compute the expected number of crimes. And this is going to tell me like, how efficient, how accurate, how well is my model of crime prediction. Okay? So here the algorithm is trying to maximize the expected number of crimes while explicitly ignoring any allocation such that this difference of probability the discovery is more than enough. Okay? And we extend this algorithm in two main ways I'm going to explain. The first is that, as I showed you before, the distribution of crimes in Bogota is not as Poisson as we want it to be. Um, and then actually in our actual simulations, and I'll show you this in a moment, uh, using Poisson as a distribution actually has an unexpected behavior and is not reliable and robust to our, in our setting. So we actually estimate this distribution using a kernel density estimation. We try to use other models of density estimation, even deep, deep networks to, to do this, and the results are pretty consistent. I'm just going to present the KDE to just to illustrate the big algorithm. And then we use the, the estimated empirical distribution to compute this expected value. Okay, now it's not CI, the Poisson distribution, but CI hat, our estimated Poisson distribution. Same here, we use our estimated distribution of crimes to compute the tails of the distribution and also to compute the expected numbers of crimes. And, and also, more importantly, we change the greedy rules um, and we're not trying to maximize or we don't assign the police to the region where, with the most probability mass between VI and VI plus one, but to the region with the highest probability of crime occurrence greater than V, okay? And this is just, as you can see here, if I'm just, I don't know, if I'm here and I need to add another police, then the probability mass between V and V plus one is very low, but the complete mass in the right tail is greater. And our algorithm is having like that, that problem of escaping from this local low probability of occurrence in the city. And it has to be like take into account the whole distribution and the right tail that we estimate here. Okay, uh, so to wrap a little bit, we're trying to allocate 1,051 police units among 19 spatial regions and we vary alpha this fairness threshold between 0.01, 1% difference, and 0.1, 10% difference. And we compare our results with five different models of police location. First is the current allocation of Bogota using the number of patterns. And the locality is going to be assigned the number of police as the number of quadrants in that region. Uh, a naive allocation that just assigned police in a proportion of crime in each region, a greedy allocation that just maximizes the expected number of crimes and do not take into account any fairness requirement. And we also look like, okay, our extensions, our changes to the original algorithm are actually working. Uh, so how is the original model algorithm using Poisson distribution uh, and with the original greedy allocation rule, okay? And we can see this, with these are the different results in the allocation. We can check, especially from the current allocation, according to quadrants in the city, is different a lot between the 
our model is in of, of less than three percent. This greedy rule that doesn't take into account any fairness is alpha equal one. They can defer, but whatever they want, and the naive distribution taking into account the um, the, um, uh, the the proportion of primes in the image. So, and we can see here that these three are quite similar. They're not exactly the same. They differ by three or three, uh, three or four patrols between different localities, but the, the three of them are still so, somewhat similar that we interpret as they're still taking into account the crime distribution, not as this one that is just like a administrative result of how to allocate the list. And the actual numbers are here, and the proposed algorithm, that is the green one, the green one is the kernel density using the complete distribution as the greater rule. The orange one is estimating with kernel density and using the original greater rule of the authors. And the blue one is the Poisson um, prime distribution in the, in the algorithm. And the point in naive is allocating place according to the proportion of primes. Okay, and our algorithm generates a, an allocation with a really high number of expected number of observed crimes with an alpha of 0 0.021. 2% difference of probability of discovery between two different regions, it's max. And we can see that even though this seem the same, seem very similar, this is like changes in the distribution in the allocation represent either a pair model to the, the left, left of this plot or what is a higher expected number of primes being discovered. In the results, we also see that, okay, the Poisson model has a different behavior. Uh, we should expect that if we lose the fairness restriction here, then the model can allocate better uh, allocation and can increase the expected number of primes, but it, it actually doesn't happen in the blue line, in the, taking the Poisson distribution. And we see that as a result of the algorithm just looking into the portion of, of the mass of probability between VI and VI plus one and not looking at the full right, right tail of distribution that we modify in our extension. Um, also, the naive model has a low alpha. It's a really good model. And there is a fair allocation, and, but it has, still has a lower number of primes than our proposed model. And finally, the current allocation in Bogota is as an alpha of 0 0.54. That's huge in comparison to 0 0.202. And expected crimes of 983 in comparison to more than 1,040 in our in the different settings of the model. So actually, the current way police deployed in Bogota is an unfair in the allocation, assuming that the police is being allocated according to the number of problems in the city. As a discussion, okay, we are we were able to allocate patrols at the same time, maximizing the expected number of times and considering fairness issue. Uh, some limitation, I have to say that we are not able to provide general performance warranty uh, as the original authors El Sign it all uh, did for Poisson distribution. They have actually proved that um, under Poisson distribution, the algorithm converges to the optimum solution. And we want to check a little bit better how sensor data can play a more active role in our algorithm. By construction, we are not allowing that, that this feedback loop occur because there is no retraining in our algorithm, and we want to incorporate that into, into the model. So happy to answer any question. Thank you very much for listening. And there's a reference, and you can check the paper if you are interested or reach out. We can talk more. Thank you.